of poisoning. One pernicious type of poisoning is called lead poisoning. Oftentimes, it's not something that we recognize to be a problem. In fact, it's something that oftentimes goes unseen in houses and homes. The leading cause of problems are homes built before 1978, uh, after which point it was mandated that lead no longer uh, was allowed to be in paints. So many older homes, they still have layers of paint of which the newest may not have lead in it, but previous layers do have lead in it. Uh, and so I want to talk about what is the nature of this problem and what are some things that you can uh, protect yourself with. Um, this is also of concern, especially to renters and landlords. There are some rules <coughs> that are required for landlords to provide disclosure statements and for renters to at least be aware that they might be potentially exposed to lead in the home. So I'd like to talk about this uh, pernicious, pernicious issue uh, here. Okay, so what I want to talk about, well, what is lead? What are the dangers of lead? Um, some issues related to uh, disclosure. Um, also, uh, protecting your family from lead in your home. There's a pamphlet that uh, will talk about lead, uh, ways that you might be able to remediate it or at least prevent some harm from it. Um, and some uh, ways to uh, avoid it, all right? Uh, and then some fact sheets, and again, uh, some examples of disclosure forms, all right? First of all, what is lead? Lead is a heavy metal that occurs naturally in the Earth's crust, but with human activities such as mining, burning of fossil fuels, and manufacturing, it has become somewhat widespread. Lead was also once a key ingredient in paint, gasoline, and is still used in batteries, solder pipes, pottery, roofing materials, and some cosmetics. Um, one of the great uh, uh, achievements of public health, if you will, and of uh, some regulations uh, was the removal of lead from gasoline. I say it was a success story because the public health uh, department was monitoring federal government was monitoring blood lead levels of people over the years and when they finally banned uh, lead and gasolines what we've been noticing especially among adults is that the level blood lead levels have been gradually going down so I say it's a, a big success story the problem is we still have high exposure levels among children because of these other ways that uh, and products that they're being exposed to So where is lead found? Um, I mentioned some products that it's found in. Uh, it, it has been in paint and pigments, uh, water pipes. It's rarely found in source water, but it enters the tap water through corrosion of plumbing materials. Uh, homes that were built before 1986 are more likely to have lead pipes, fixtures, and solder. Or they may not have lead pipes, but they may have uh, where they're soldered together, there might be some lead, all right? Uh, the most common problem is with brass or chrome-plated brass faucets and fixtures, which can leach significant amounts of lead into the water, especially hot water. So the hotter the, the water is, it's more likely that lead will leach from the pipes or from these materials into the water. Uh, it can also be found in canned goods, soil, household dust, especially if the paint starts peeling. This is one of the highest exposures that kids get, um, especially around window sills in certain places in the home. If the paint is peeling, that can start breaking down, or if it's even worse if they start putting paint chips in their mouth and that type of exposure. So one of the major problems is the dust that's created from peeling paint in older homes. Uh, Cosmetics, pottery, toys, some toys, especially in some countries that may still have some lead-based paints, may inadvertently make its way on the toys. Uh, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, have found that more than 24 million homes in the U.S. have lead-based paint. And when children are exposed to lead, they're often at risk for 
getting learning disabilities, behavioral problems, seizures, comas, and even death. In other words, what lead does to the human body, and it's more extensive in children because um, they're smaller and their uh, levels may be higher relative to body weight and so forth, it usually causes some kind of neurological damage. So that as a result, they have problems thinking, they may have learning disabilities and, and other problems. I should point out here, though, that obviously kids can have those problems for other reasons. All right? However, if they are exposed to lead and their blood lead levels are high, uh, they, could, they could have these problems due to that. There are various fact sheets that the federal government has prepared. Uh, there's one here that I have for you that's put out by the uh, HUD and also the EPA. Uh, they talk about protecting their children from lead-based poisoning. Uh, they talk about it being in the home, as I just mentioned. And uh, they also talk about uh, people who are renters, their rights in knowing that they might potentially be exposed to lead. So in any homes previous to 1978, they sh the people should get a lead disclosure that they should sign, indicating that they know that lead may be present in the house, all right, and, or is present in the house. And there's some require requirements here. It includes that sellers and landlords must disclose known lead-based paint and lead-based paint hazards and provide available reports to buyers or renters. Also, that uh, sellers and landlords must give buyers and renters the pamphlet that's called, that's put out by the EPA and HUD that's called Protect Your Family from Lead in Your Home. And I'm going to uh, share with you at the end of this presentation some resource that you can go and, and find that. Also, um, home buyers are supposed to get a 10-day period to conduct a lead-based paint inspection or risk assessment. Um, at their own expense. The rule gives the two parties flexibility to negotiate key terms of the evaluation. Also, sales contracts and leasing agreements must include certain notification and disclosure language. Sellers, lessors, and real estate agents share responsibility uh, for the compliance with these regulations by the EPA and HUD. Right? Now, what is not required as a result of uh, the law all right, for tenants and landlords and so forth? Um, first of all, the rule does not require that any testing or removal of lead-based paint be done by the sellers or the landlords. So it's not required that you remove it. Also, the, this rule does not invalidate leasing and sales contracts that are already in existence. Um, if somebody does remediate, meaning try to remove the lead that's in the house, in other words, they want to scrape off all the paint, um, you really need to hire somebody that knows what they're doing in terms of being able to protect themselves. You don't want to remove all the paint and cause a lot of dust, lead dust to go into the air, which you then breathe in. So somebody really should be hired that knows how to do lead remediation. Uh, so that they can do it in a very safe way and that you don't end up with a lot of lead exposure in other rooms and so forth. All right. All right, so this disclosure regulation then, um, it's, it applies to pre-1978 housing for sale or lease, any public and privately owned housing, and it requires, as I said, this free educational pamphlet a warning statement in the contract, disclosure of known lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards, all available information about it, and also provide an opportunity for testing. Um, if somebody is a landlord, um, there are standard disclosure um, forms that are available that you can use for housing uh, rentals. Um, and also, if you're a renter, you should be getting uh, these forms that you make you aware of it. Um, oftentimes, you'll get the form, even if it's a post-1978 uh, housing unit, but they'll check the box and saying it, it does not, it, it was built after 1978, so you're aware of that. All right. 
Again, there are various forms out here. Here's a standard type of form. There are some exemptions to the, uh, to the lead-based uh, disclosures regulations. One is any post-1977 housing, as I said. Uh, the zero-bedroom units where the residential dwelling, uh, the living areas are not separated from the sleeping areas. Uh, any housing that's exclusively for the elderly or disabled. Property that's certified as lead-based paint-free. Property where the lead-based paint was removed. All right, so um, if it's worth the expense to the owner, they may have had the lead-based removed, and now you don't have to worry about it. All right? Uh, any uh, unoccupied property pending demolition where it's going to be torn down. Any non-residential uh, part of property, so it's being used for something else not living. And any rehabilitation or maintenance activities that do not disturb painted surfaces. Um, also, any kind of emergency kind of actions that uh, may need to take place. All right? um, here's the uh, pamphlet that's entitled Protect Your Family from Lead in Your Home. I won't go through all of these, it's in like at least 14 pages or so, but it, it tells you all of uh, the situation about your rights um, uh, related to lead-based paint, but also some simple steps that you can take to protect your family. All right, let me give you some examples here. All right, uh, they say this, do not remove the lead-based paint yourself. Always keep the paint and surface in a good condition to minimize deterioration. Get your home checked for lead hazards. Uh, you might want to have a certified inspector take a look at it. Uh, talk to your landlord about fixing surfaces with peeling or chipping paint. So if you're in a pre-1978 home and you're renting and you see peeling paint, uh, talk to your landlord uh, to see if either you can paint it or uh, the landlord will paint it. Um, Regularly clean floors, windowsills, and other surfaces. Why? Because if you get some dust on the floor, if you clean those up, then kids will not get it onto their skin uh, and will not be as, as uh, exposed to it. Take precautions to avoid exposure to lead dust when remodeling, when renovating, repairing, or painting. Hire only an EPA or state-approved lead-safe certified renovation firm. Before buying, renting, or renovating your home, have it checked for lead-based paint. Uh, consult your health care provider about testing your children for lead. Your pediatrician can check for lead with a simple blood test. Um, this is something I really want to encourage people to think about. If you have the child one to five, ask your pediatrician to give them a simple blood test to check what their blood levels are especially if you're living in a house that's pre-1978. Um, it'll enable you to have a little peace of mind in knowing that if they don't have high blood levels, even if the pain is there, obviously they're not getting much exposure to it, at least that way. All right? It also would mean they're not getting exposed to it in other ways. Right? So a blood test will be a good indicator of how they're, they're doing. Also, wash children's hands, bottles, pacifiers, and toys often. Make sure that's a good practice anyway, um, for other reasons, uh, such as bacteria. Make sure that children avoid fatty foods and eat nutritious meals high in iron and calcium. Uh, this helps uh, deal with any lead that might be in the blood. Uh, there's relationships between you know, binding and things like that, that uh, if you have adequate uh, iron and uh, calcium, um, It'll help mitigate uh, lead exposure. And then remove uh, shoes or wipe soil off the shoes before entering your house. In addition to lead being found in peeling paint, paint chips and dust, lead can be found other places. Um, for example, it, it can be found in soil. Um, this can be a problem if children play, especially in bare soil where the lead is present. Um, it can also be brought home from certain occupations. Uh, so people should be careful if you're working in factories or places where lead may be getting on clothing, 
um, you may actually be bringing it into the house. So you can be exposed to lead uh, other than just um, through pain. So this uh, pamphlet gives you a lot of good suggestions, tells you about lead exposure, what's the potential harm for it, um, as well as some ways that you can mitigate or reduce uh, the potential harm done by lead. Um, another place that you can go, it's called pahousingsearch.com. Um, this database uh, for all landlords and sellers can be used to indicate whether or not a property is lead safe or lead free, but it really does not substitute for full requirements of the disclosure rule. All right, but you can go here to pahousingsearch.com and it'll give you some information on whether houses have lead or not. All right. Okay, so what are some recommendations then that you can do or uh, we suggest that you think about regarding potential lead exposure in the home? One is, if you suspect you may have lead paint in your home, get advice on safe removal from the housing or urban development. Some place that really knows how to deal with the lead issue, if you want to remove it. Secondly, do not remove the lead yourself. Um, keep your home as dust-free as possible. Have everyone wash their hands before eating. Again, it'll get any kind of dust off the hands. Throw out any old painted toys if you do not know whether the paint contains lead or not. And as I said, please consider getting children tested, especially those first five, year, uh, five years of life, but even beyond if you think there might be potential lead exposure for the kids. If your water has tested high in lead, consider installing an effective filtering device or switch to bottled water for drinking and cooking. Again, don't assume that your water has lead in it. Get a test and you'll be able to know whether it does or not. Clean the floor, uh, window sills, and, and door frames with a solution of powdered, uh, I'm sorry, powdered automatic dishwashing detergent, tri-sodium phosphate detergent, or lead-specific cleaning products. Teach children not to eat sand, dirt, and paint chips, or to play in grassy areas outside. Also, avoid any kind of canned goods from foreign countries until we know, uh, until a ban on lead soldered cans uh, goes into effect. Uh, this is one of the problems we have some foreign countries uh, that are using lead-based solder uh, for canned goods. Uh, do not store wine, spirits, or vinegar-based salad dressings in lead crystal decanters for long periods of time because lead can get into the liquid if there's lead in the decanters. Again, these are um, uh, containers uh, that are made uh, with lead. Uh, a balanced, it could be uh, certain types of products that have that in a balanced diet that includes adequate levels of vitamin C, iron, zinc, and calcium, and phosphorus can reduce or prevent lead absorption. So it reduces the amount of lead absorbed into the body. Uh, cover old paint, meaning on the walls. If the paint is on tight without many chips forming or peeling, you can paint over it. You can also use paneling, drywall, and encapsulation, which is similar to a very thick coat of paint. Also wear protective equipment and clothing on any jobs that you do where you might be exposed to lead. Jobs or hobbies um, of lead exposure may bring some home. Uh, places like shooting ranges, stained glass, construction, auto and radiator repairs, some artists, uh, things that they use have lead in it, battering glass manufacturers, lead smelters, painters, plumbers, and others. Uh, when you come home, make sure you change your clothes, take a shower, wash your hair. I'm sorry, even if you can do it before you come home, before leaving your job, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, do not shake out work clothes or wash them with other clothes. And use only cold water for cooking or drinking. Hot water is likely to have higher levels of lead than cold in older homes built before 1986. Uh, and if you rent, contact your landlord, especially if you see peeling paint and things that may be able to be taken care of that will reduce your exposure to lead. Also, I, just a reminder of the disclosure statements, violating the lead disclosure rules may result in civil or criminal penalties. 
and also real estate agents, landlords, or sellers may be fined up to $10,000 per violation or costs of up to three times the amounts of damages to the tenants or the buyers, all right? Um, oftentimes, the problem is not the real estate agents. Uh, they're pretty much <clears throat> following the law with the disclosures, but the biggest problem is oftentimes landlords, they just may ignore it. They really don't know a lot about it. Um, and so as a result, they're not giving the disclosure statements. And then finally, uh, some resources here. Uh, we have the regional uh, lead contacts, the HUD lead office, the National Lead Information Clearinghouse. Um, also, we've established uh, a web address uh, here at East Stroudsburg University. It's quantum.esu.edu slash lead awareness. Uh, also, we have the uh, CDC and the Pennsylvania State um, website that addresses lead. So, these are the leading five household injuries uh, that are called household hazards uh, that cause some fatalities, but also a lot of people to be injured. Um, of these five leading household injuries, one of them is poisoning, the second leading cause of injury. And as I just uh, stated, one of the pernicious types of poisoning is something that you really oftentimes don't think about. You really don't see it. Um, it's basically uh, in paint, especially that's peeling, uh, may be found in other products that have been acquired either through foreign countries or um, as a result of work. Uh, depending on what the work site is that the person engages in. So please consider these. They're, these do not have to lead to fatalities, deaths, and injuries um, if we take the proper precaution and try to prevent uh, these five leading causes of death and injury in, in homes.